By the end of this tutorial, you are going to learn exactly how to design, create, and render this 3D printable bubble planter within Fusion 360, as well as how to make a detachable base for this product. So with that said, let's get started. Welcome back everyone and welcome to another Fusion 360 tutorial. Today we're actually going to be designing a fully functional 3D printable product which is this 3D printable bubble planter within Fusion 360. So with that said let's go ahead and jump into exactly what we're going to cover in today's video. So the very first thing we're going to cover is exactly how to design this 3D printable bubble planter. Additionally, we'll also learn how to use the pattern on path features to create multiple patterns um, within Fusion 360. Additionally, we'll also learn how to use the revolve feature to revolve sketches and profiles. And lastly, if you haven't already, feel free to join the 3D printing community within the description as we cover topics just like this. And you can get some more feedback to your questions and get more expert advice. So with that said, let's jump into Fusion 360 and get started. So to get started with this project, let's go ahead and open up a new canvas within Fusion 360. The first thing we need to do is go ahead and create a new component. By creating a new component, this allows us to separate the pieces. Additionally, the first piece here, or the new component, will be named as 3D Printable Bubble Planter. After you set the name, press OK. From here, what we want to do now is go ahead and create our sketch. So by pressing Create Sketch within these toolbar at the very top, and by selecting this front plane here, we should automatically be centered within the origin of our canvas. Now by using the line command, what we want to do is press L on our keyboard, select the origin, and drag this up to about 75 millimeters. After that's done, press OK, select the check mark. Additionally, what we also want to do is add a rectangle to the left hand side. By selecting the origin, we drag this out to about 35 millimeters. Then drag it up again to about 18 millimeters and then drag it back to the center of the line. From here, you should automatically have, or you should see that you have kind of like this L-shaped sketch on your canvas. What we also want to do now to give that bubble-like or bubble planter-like shape is create some sort of di circle diameter or a circle to kind of make this a little bit more round. So there's a couple of ways we can go about this, but one way we can also go about this is by using the center diameter circle, and by selecting this, we'll go ahead and uh, select this line at the very left hand side. Now what you want to do is make sure to select the triangle that pops up so you should automatically feel that there is a snap going on within your canvas and by selecting that triangle you can scale this out and select this outer line here. So by selecting this outer line you should see this gap kind of snap onto place here. You should see this circle and square kind of sketch pop up or icon pop up. From here once that's done press uh, select that and from here, you should have this completely finished sketch with three different profiles listed here. What we want to do now is finish our sketch and use the revolve feature within Fusion 360 in order to wrap this around this axis here. Now, the great thing about Fusion 360 is that it allows us to play with sketches and turn them into basically 3D models. So by pressing S on our keyboard and typing in revolve, selecting the first one with this blue icon, you should see a dialog box pops up on the right hand side of the screen. Now by selecting the profile, the profile is listed as whatever we have on our canvas that is a closed sketch. So what we're going to do is select these three closed sketches here. Selecting our axis, the axis is the line that we created upwards. And after that's done, you should see a torus or a shape that's shaped like a torus made within your canvas. Once that's done, you see there's a couple of different options that pop up, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to move forward and press OK. Now you should have basically this kind of donut looking shape within your canvas. Additionally, one additional option or feature within Fusion 360 allows us to create multiple features and bodies and components of an item without having to do the exact same process of sketching and creating another one and then having to manually place it right over it. So by using the pattern on path feature, we can type in S on our keyboard, which brings up the design shortcuts and type in pattern on path. By selecting this very first option here, we select that. Now we have a dialog box popped up. 
Now, there are three different types of pattern on path features within Fusion. There is a rectangular pattern, there is a circular pattern, and then there is pattern on path. For the sake of this video, we'll be using pattern on path. Object type, there are different object types for this feature. We have bodies, faces, features, and components. What you really need to know about this is that object type refers to exactly what is it that you're going to be patterning. Are you going to pattern multiple bodies, pattern multiple faces, pattern multiple features, or uh, turn those, use multiple features, or pattern multiple components, if that makes sense. So in this instance, we're going to be selecting features for object type. Objects, the object is essentially what exactly uh, what feature are you going to be patterning? So for example, since we are using features, we need to go ahead and select features, which is listed in our timeline. If we were using bodies, we would have to select the bodies that we plan on patterning within our uh, component on the left-hand side or anywhere within our timeline if it's shown. But in this case, we'll be using features. And by selecting the objects, we'll go ahead and select the revolve feature that we just created um, initially before this step. Additionally, the path, the path would be basically the line or the angle or whatever, whatever sketch that we created that allows us to basically duplicate this object here. So in order to toggle back on our path, we need to toggle our sketch, which is shown on the left hand side. By toggling on our sketch, you can see we have our line that we initially created at the very beginning. From here, select that line, reorient our plane. And now what we want to do is drag this up to about 75 millimeters. From here, we also have some more options listed. We have quantity, distance, start point, distribution, direction, orientation, compute type. Now, for the sake of this video, we're not gonna cover every single thing within this dialog box here, but mainly the main things we need to focus on is making sure that we can fill in this gap here. So in order to do that, what we wanna do is select the quantity amount and up this by two. You should have a total of five, assuming you have this uh, risen up by at least 75 millimeters. And after that's done, press OK. Now you should have this basically a 3D model of kind of like this bubble looking shape. Now from here, if you've also noticed on our left hand side within our component section, even though we pattern these features, it's going to create new bodies of these designs here that we just pattern. So in order to make sure that we don't have any issues later on, what we want to do is combine these bodies into one uniform body. So what we want to do is press S on our keyboard and type in combine. From here, the very first option should be selected, should be this light blue color here. And then selecting our body one, two, three, four, five. Now on the, on the right hand side, you should see the target body. The target body is gonna be our initial body that we just created. The tool bodies are gonna be all the secondary bodies that were created after we use the pattern on path feature. After that, operations should be selected to join and then press okay. Now, as you can see, Fusion 360 automatically merged all of those bodies into one. So if we were to toggle this on and off, you can see that all of them go away. Additionally, what we also want to do is create an offset for this so we can actually fit something inside of this. So by pressing O on our keyboard, we can select this very top face here. And zooming in, what we want to do is select this outer circle line here. So by selecting this, we can also drag this inward. So we can drag this outward and inward, but we want to drag this inward to about negative 2.5. After that's done, press OK. Now you should have basically a nearly or you should basically have a new sketch within your body here you should have this outer sketch that we initially had and this new offsetted sketch that we created here now what we, what we want to do is by using the extrude feature within fusion by pressing e on our keyboard selecting this sketch here and dragging this down to about negative 75. after that's done press ok now from here we have a fully 3d printable bubble planter that is ready to be 3D printed and sent off to your slicer. Now keep in mind, this is not the completed final product. Within the next video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to design it with this completely detachable base so you have something specific for like drainage holes and stuff like that and for water to seep through. But of course, like any tutorial, we need to cover the basics of how to design something before we get into some more intricate details like how I just showed you in that other model. Additionally, if you also wanted to look at this, how this looks in a rendering environment, you can go to the left hand side where it shows design, select render, and then you should be in the render environment of Fusion 360. 
Additionally, if you also wanted to change the color of this, press A on your keyboard. And like mentioned in the previous video, you can search up any color you want. So let's just say red. I can add red to my design here. And now we have this red bubble planter within our rendering environment. And if we wanted to render, we can press this little in canvas render within Fusion 360. And that's how you make this 3D printable bubble planter. So like as mentioned in the next video, we'll cover exactly how to create that detachable base. But if you also want to send this off to print and you don't care about that, you can go ahead and right click on that body, save as mesh, make sure it's set to send to 3D print utility, press okay. And now you should have this bubble planter sent off to your slicer that is fully ready to be 3D printed. So with that said, I hope you guys found this video insightful and informative. In the next video, we'll cover exactly how to make that detachable base. So if you guys liked this video and found it informative, make sure to drop a like and comment down below exactly if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or probably still need help or maybe need clarity as to something, maybe something I wasn't clear about at uh, about this video um if you also haven't joined the community as well so if you also want to get more feedback and you have any undying questions you want to ask as well you can also join the community with the link in description so with that said this is brandon signing out i'll see you guys in the next one peace